In this video, you will learn about celebrities who died in 1987. In 1960, Warhol created a design for Coca-Cola cans, which made him famous as an artist with an unconventional vision of art. In the early 60s, Warhol became increasingly involved in graphics, creating mainly only works depicting dollar bills. In 1960 to 1962, appeared a series of works depicting cans of Campbell's soup. The main point of Warhol's films was to reveal the essence of the sexual revolution. In the mid-1960s, Warhol moved from shooting black and white silent films to color films with a script. June 1968, 32-year-old actress Valerie Solanas, who had previously starred in Warhol's films, entered the studio and shot Andy three times in the stomach from the threshold. On February 8, 1987, Warhol underwent surgery to remove his gallbladder at Cornell Hospital. On February 22, 1987, Warhol died suddenly of cardiac arrest in his sleep in his 59th year. He is buried in his native Pittsburgh. Buddy Rich is the conductor of Rhythm Magazine's list of the most influential drummers of all time. He has influenced most of today's drummers. Rich is also ranked hash 15 on Rolling Stone Magazine's list of the greatest drummers of all time. Rich's technique, including speed and smoothness of execution, has become a standard in drumming. Despite his traditional grip, he could also play with other grips. One of his tricks was crossing hand movements during drumming, often eliciting loud applause from the audience. Buddy Rich actively performed until the end of his life. On April 2, 1987, at the age of 69, the musician died of heart failure after surgery to remove a malignant brain tumor. He is buried at Westwood Village Memorial Park Cemetery in Los Angeles. Kay made his acting debut in 1935 in the comedy short film, Moon Over Manhattan. In 1941, after the premiere of the musical Lady in the Dark, he became a true Broadway star. The first feature film actor was a 1944 comedy, Join the Army. Kay was twice awarded the Golden Globe in the category of best male role in a comedy or musical for his work in the films On the Riviera and Me and the Colonel. From 1963 to 1967, he hosted his own program, The Danny Kay Show. Kay served as an ambassador for UNICEF on several occasions. He passed away in 1987 from a heart attack. He is survived by his wife, Sylvia Fine, and daughter, Donna, American broadcaster, film, television, and theater producer. In the post-war years, he worked as a press agent for Warner Brothers and as a talent agent for Century Artists. He then went to work in the newly created television department of the American Music Corporation, where he was manager for Dina Shore, Jerry Lewis, and others. In 1951, he founded Talent Associates, a production company in New York City that worked with content creators rather than actors. In 1958, David Suskin's talk show called Open End began airing on New York's WNTA-TV. Suskin discussed with his guests various sensitive and polemical issues, race relations, transsexuality, and others. David Suskin died of a heart attack on February 22, 1987 in New York City. He is buried in Westchester Hills Cemetery in Hastings-on-Hudson. Dean Paul Martin was the son of entertainer Dean Martin. Martin began using his first name Dean Paul instead of the nickname Dino as a teenager. He went on to become a successful tennis player, Wimbledon qualifier, and actor. Martin, an avid pilot, earned his pilot's license at age 16 and became an officer in the California National Guard in 1980. He entered active duty to train as an officer in the U.S. Air Force through the Palace Chase Program. In the Air National Guard, he was commissioned as a junior lieutenant and completed pilot training at Columbus Air Force Base, Mississippi, in 1981. During a training flight from March Air Force Base in 1987, Martin's F-4 crashed in the San Bernardino Mountains of California during a snowstorm, killing him and his weapons systems officer, Captain Ramon Ortiz. Martin was 35 years old. Dick Sean was a versatile actor known for his extensive repertoire of supporting roles. Throughout the 1960s, he delighted audiences with his appearances in zany comedies, often portraying exaggerated versions of counterculture figures. Examples include his portrayal of the hedonistic yet oddly attached Sylvester Marcus in It's a Mad, 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 Mad World, and the hippie actor Lorenzo Sandubois in The Producers. 
Alongside his film work, he graced the small screen in various television shows from the 1960s to the 1980s. In addition to his contributions to over 30 movies and seven Broadway productions, he made frequent television appearances, embarked on tours, and periodically performed a captivating one-man show that seamlessly integrated songs, sketches, and pantomime. Tragically, on April 17, 1987, while performing at the Mandeville Hall at the University of California, San Diego, he suffered a heart attack and collapsed onto the stage face down. In 1957, Coco made his Broadway debut in the production of Hotel Paradiso, and in 1961, he won his first professional award, an Obie Award for his role in Moon in the Yellow River. His later work on the New York theater stages was also recognized with positive reviews from critics, as well as a nomination for the prestigious Tony Theater Award. On movie screens, Coco appeared in a dozen pictures, including Warren Officer Pulver, The End of the Road, Say You Love Me, Junie Moon, New Leaf, Man of La Mancha, The Muppets Take Manhattan, as well as the tragic comedy Only When I Laugh, the role in which brought him a nomination for Oscar, Golden Globe, and Golden Raspberry. James Coco died of a heart attack in New York City on February 25, 1987, at the age of 56. He is buried at St. Gertrude's Catholic Cemetery in New Jersey. Joyce Jameson is an American actress known for many roles on television, including recurring guest appearances as Skippy, one of the funny girls in the 1960s television series Andy, Griffith, as well as Blondie, in the Oscar-winning film The Apartment. Jameson got her start in the early 1950s, playing numerous uncredited roles in film and television. She made her film debut in 1951, playing a dancer in the chorus in Showboat. Other notable films from that early period include Difficult Girls, The Dead Jockey Tip, and The Apartment. In 1962, she co-starred with Vincent Price and Peter Lorre in Roger Corman's horror film, Horrible Histories as Annabelle Spruce. Haynes died of lung cancer at the age of 52 in Coronado, California. He is survived by his third wife, Carolyn Inglis, and four-year-old daughter, Jessica Haynes. Haynes served in the U.S. Marine Corps from 1952 to 1964 and during the Korean War. His film career included roles in Madigan, Ice Station Zebra, Attack on Wayne, Look What Happened to Rosemary's Baby, The Greatest and Good Guys Wear Black. He was best known as school history teacher Pete Dixon in the comedy drama series Room 222 with Denise Nicholas, Michael Constantine, and Karen Valentine. Haynes and Valentine were nominated for Emmy and Golden Globe Awards for their roles. Patrick Troughton played the second incarnation of the Doctor in the long-running British science fiction television series Doctor Who from 1966 to 1969. He repeated the role in 1972 to 1973, 1983, and 1985. His other work includes appearances in several fantasy, science fiction, and horror productions, including Omen and the Box of Delights. After leaving Doctor Who in 1969, Troton appeared in a variety of film and television roles. Movie roles included Clove in Dracula's Scars, A Body Snatcher in Frankenstein, and The Monster from Hell, Father Brennan in The Omen, and Melantius in Sinbad and Eye of the Tiger. Troughton's health was never fully robust due to alcohol abuse and smoking. Troughton suffered a heart attack at 7.25 a.m. on March 28, 1987, just after ordering breakfast at a hotel. In his 35-year film career, Randolph Scott has appeared in a variety of genre films, including social and crime dramas, comedies, musicals, adventures, war films, as well as several horror and science fiction films. However, his most memorable portrayals are played in westerns, of which he has the preponderance in his repertoire. Among them are the films Scoundrels, Colt 45 Caliber, Santa Fe, Hangman's Noose, Stranger with a Revolver, and Stagecoach Guard, Seven Must Die, and The Big Scare. The last time on movie screens actor appeared in 1962 in the movie Ride the Highlands, after which he retired, and the following years spent the next years without poverty in his country house in California. Randolph Scott passed away at the age of 89 in Beverly Hills due to heart disease. He is buried in Elmwood Cemetery in Charlotte. In 1986, Bolger was diagnosed with bladder cancer, and later that year, his health deteriorated 
and he left his home in Beverly Hills to live in a nursing home in Los Angeles, where he died on January 15, 1987, less than five days after turning 83. After starring in Richard Rogers' first production of On Your Toes in 1936, in which he played the male lead in the ballet section of the 10th Avenue Massacre, Bolger signed his first film contract with MGM in 1936, and although The Wizard of Oz was the early part of his film career, he appeared in other notable films. His most famous pre-Oz appearance was The Great Ziegfeld, in which he portrayed himself. He also appeared in Beloved, MGM's first film in color, starring Nelson Eddy and Jeanette MacDonald. He also appeared in Eleanor Powell's Rosalie, also starring Eddie and Frank Morgan. Rita's first significant work was a role in Howard Hawks' Only Angels Have Wings, where she starred alongside such stars as Cary Grant and Gene Arthur. Followed later, Strawberry Blonde, directed by Raoul Walsh, Blood and Sand by Ruben Mamolena, Cover Girl by Charles Vidor made Rita Hayworth popular. In musical comedies, You'll Never Be Richer and You've Never Been More Delightful, where Hayworth starred in a pair with the famous Fred Astaire, moviegoers could see the actress in all her brilliance. Here, Rita came in handy dance skills, which she learned all her life. The pinnacle of Hayworth's career was a love melodrama, Gilda Charles Vidor, which made her an undisputed goddess of Hollywood Olympus, an erotic idol of America. Robert Bud Dwyer was an American politician and Pennsylvania state treasurer who was accused of corruption and shot and killed during a televised press conference. In the early 1980s, it was discovered that errors in Pennsylvania's state tax system caused excessive income taxes to be levied on state employees. A multi-million dollar contract granting the right to calculate compensation payments was claimed by numerous auditing firms. In 1986, Pennsylvania's treasurer was accused of accepting a bribe from a California firm trying to get the contract bypassing competitors. Throughout the trial, Dwyer adamantly denied guilt insisting he was the victim of political persecution. Dwyer's final trial and sentencing was scheduled for January 23, 1987, the day following his suicide. After Reagan took office, Reagan named Casey to the post of Director of Central Intelligence. Outgoing director Stansfield Turner characterized the appointment as the resurrection of Wild Bill, referring to Bill Donovan, the brilliant and eccentric head of Office of Strategic Services in World War II, whom Casey had known and greatly admired. Casey died of a brain tumor on May 6, 1987, at the age of 74. His requiem mass was said by Far Daniel Fagan, then pastor of St. Mary's Roman Catholic Church in Roslyn, New York. And his funeral was led by Bishop John R. McGann, who used his pulpit to castigate Casey for his ethics and actions in Nicaragua. It was attended by President Reagan and the First Lady. Casey is buried in the Cemetery of the Holy Rood in Westbury, New York. He was survived by his wife, the former Sophia Kurz, and his daughter, Bernadette Casey Smith. His career, spanning four decades, has included concert performances, album releases, television and film appearances. Liberace is widely recognized for his virtuoso piano technique and colorful stage image. In 1950, Liberace made his film debut in the movie South Sea Sinner, playing the role of a pianist performing in a cheap bar. A little later, while performing at the Hotel Del Coronado, was spotted by television producer Don Federson. After that, Los Angeles television began to broadcast a show with Liberace, which later became popular, and Liberace himself received two Emmy Awards for it. In 1952, Liberace made his debut as a television showman. In the early 1980s, the musician's health deteriorated. He began to lose weight and generally looked emaciated. Liberace died on the afternoon of February 4, 1987, in the presence of his sister, Angelini Farrell, sister-in-law Dora Liberace, and girlfriend Jamie Wyatt. He was 67 years of age. The cause of death was heart failure, acute encephalopathy, and a plastic anemia due to AIDS.